Hey everyone, Steven here at My Life Outdoors. Well, the temperatures are starting to drop and with a little luck, that means the mountains are gonna start looking like Rivendell. But unlike Frodo, if you plan to hike this fall, you're gonna need more than an elven cloak and a bedroll. That's why today I'm talking about all the gear that I take and that you might need to stay warm and enjoy the cooler temperatures of fall. In fact, I'm leaving in just a few days to head to Washington and Olympic National Park. And so as I pack up my gear, I thought that I would show you what I plan to take and how I pack it. This is my 2021 fall backpacking gear list. So let's take a look. Pack. So I just picked up this pack and this will actually be my first time to use it. It's the Hyperlite Southwest 3400. It's a Dyneema pack, but the outside pockets are made with 250D nylon with Dyneema ripstop threads to create a lightweight but abrasion resistant barrier around the bottom edge of the pack. This is a 55 liter pack that comes in under two pounds. And one of the things I really like about this pack is Dyneema is waterproof and the pack is fully seam sealed, which means that I shouldn't need any type of liner, but I've heard horror stories of soaked gear. And so until I'm able to trust it, I'm going to be using a Nile Flume bag liner from Gossamer Gear. Supposedly Nile Flume is tougher than a contractor bag, but honestly, I don't know because this thing is so light that my scale wouldn't register it. So normally I would line the pack with this and then I put everything else in, but I'm not gonna do that today because I don't wanna have to deal with crinkling in the video. So a sleeping bag is the first thing that I change about my loadout when preparing for fall temperatures. In the summer, I like the weight and the flexibility of a quilt, but once it starts getting a little cooler, I don't want to have to worry about drafts. I have a tendency to toss around and all that tossing around can pull up the sides of a quilt, letting in cold air. But with a sleeping bag, you don't have to worry about drafts and you have a hood that will keep your head warm. This sleeping bag is the Echo Trail Down 20 from the North Face. It's not the lightest at almost three pounds, but it's ISO comfort to 28 degrees Fahrenheit, which means it'll keep you comfortably warm all the way past freezing. So because my sleeping bag is my last line of defense against the cold, I like to pack it in a separate trash bag just in case some water gets inside that Nile Flume bag. And then I use this trash bag inside my tent at night to put clothes and gear in that I don't want to get wet if it accidentally touches the side of my tent. When packing a pack, you want the lightest items on the bottom, and generally that's your sleeping bag because its bulk helps spread out its weight. So it goes in a trash bag all the way at the bottom of my pack. Sleeping pad. So as always, I'm using the Thermarest Neo Air. It's actually an older mattress, but it's the same R value as the X-Lite. And one of the things you need to know about fall backpacking is just because your sleeping bag is rated to 20 degrees does not mean that that is all you need to stay warm. Your bag's insulation can only keep you warm when it's lofting up, which it can't do when you're laying on it. So sleeping bags are designed to work with your sleeping pad's insulation, and that is called R value. R value is how well your sleeping pad can keep you warm. And generally speaking, for fall camping, you want an R value of at least three or higher. This pad has an R value of 4.2, and so it works well for fall camping. I put it right up on top of my sleeping bag, upright against the side of the pack. Tent. Next is my tent, and if you watch this channel much at all, then you know that the Nemo Hornet Elite is the nicest tent that I own. So, once again, it's coming with me on this trip. I won't spend a whole lot of time talking about it because I've made lots of videos talking about it, but if you want to know more about it, I have a full review that I'll link in the description below. I separate the poles from the tent and the fly. The tent and the fly go on top of my sleeping bag right next to the sleeping pad, and the poles go on the outside in one of the side pockets. So don't hate me too much for talking about my chair, but I just introduced these cool shirts that say, take a seat, because I always try to take a seat with me into the backcountry. I've got a whole video about it that I'll leave a link to in the description below. And sticking with that theme, I'm bringing with me my Helinox Chair Zero that weighs only one pound, and it's going on the outside opposite of the tent poles. If you want one of these cool shirts and help me produce more videos just like this one, you can pick one up at mylifeoutdoors.com store cooking. So recently I've been using the Tokes 550 milliliter titanium pot because it's lightweight, it's compact, and it's high quality. But I found that the 550 milliliter is just barely big enough for most of the freeze-dried meals that I tend to use. And it kind of has a tendency to boil over. So I went ahead and dedicated that pot as my wife's coffee mug, and I went and picked up a 650 milliliter pot, and hopefully this is just a little bit better at boiling water. I combine that with my old MSR pocket rocket that still works really well and has a built-in regulator. Now something you need to know about canister stoves is that the colder they get, the worse they tend to work. And once you get below freezing, they're pretty much useless. 
Now, I've never actually had a problem with this, but I've also never really tried to use it at temps that cold. Typically, the lowest temps that I face are in the middle of the night, in the early morning, and I'm just not using my stove at that time, mainly because I don't eat hot breakfast. But if you do believe that you're gonna encounter cold temperatures like that, then it's better to get a liquid stove like the MSR Whisper Light or the inverted canister stove like the MSR Win Pro 2. These will work much better in extreme cold. My stove and cook set go in down next to the sleeping pad and the tent. Bear canister. The area of Olympic that my wife and I are gonna be hiking in requires bear canisters. These things are heavy and bulky, and I don't like bringing them if I don't have to, but a lot of places require them. This is the backpacker's cache or the backpacker's cachet, however you say that. It's a seven liter bear canister that weighs a ridiculous 2.4 pounds. All of our food is gonna go in here and that goes in my pack upright on top of everything else. Clothes. Okay, extra clothes. So when I'm expecting cold temperatures approaching freezing, I take a fleece as well as an insulated jacket. My fleece is the Melanzana Microgrid hoodie. I absolutely love this thing. I got a whole video about it that I'll link in the description below. My jacket is a Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer. This is a great warm jacket that only weighs eight ounces. I also bring a warm hat and some light gloves, and I have found that that is all I need down to freezing temperatures. And if I'm still feeling cold, I just go ahead and put on my rain gear as one additional layer. I have the Montane Atomic Rain Jacket that I just recently refreshed the UWR coating. Check the video out in the description below. And I have these Montane Event rain pants. For me, this is enough to keep me warm down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, sitting around a fire, and if for some reason I still can't get warm, then I just jump in my sleeping bag. But if you're still worried that you're gonna be a little cold, then I recommend bringing a pair of long underwear top and bottom. I did this for years and I eventually stopped because I never once put them on. But if you tend to be a little bit colder, you may consider bringing these extra layers. So all these clothes go in next to the bear canister, except for my rain gear that goes in the outside pocket. If possible, I prefer to center my bear canister in my pack to help keep it balanced, but as of right now, it seems to fit better up on the side. If it starts to be uncomfortable, I'm gonna find a way to center it, like unpacking my puffy jacket so that it'll cram into the side better. Water filter. So my water filter of choice is not a squeeze filter, but they're lighter and most people seem to prefer squeeze filters. So I'm going to recommend the Platypus Quick Draw Water Filter. This is a really good fast and lightweight filter, but if you're gonna be facing freezing temperatures, you need to do something to keep this from freezing. And the easiest thing to do is just to bring it into your sleeping bag at night when you're most likely to face freezing temperatures. I keep the water filter in my hip belt pocket for easy access. Miscellaneous things that I bring are a knife, Zolio, repair tape, bug spray, med kit, headlamp, toilet paper, trowel, map, and extra batteries. Most of those things go in a small stuff sack right on top of everything else for easy access. And the medical kit goes in the outside pocket next to my rain gear. So that's just about everything that I take for a four night trip in the fall with temperatures down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. All together, this loadout with the chair and the bear canister comes in right at 16 pounds. But if you don't need the bear canister, then you can cut over two pounds from this to 13.5 pounds. I'll leave a link to my lighter pack in the description below. And if you want one of these awesome take a seat shirts, be sure to check out my store at mylifeoutdoors.com store. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe for more backpacking gear and tip videos just like this one. Also hit that like button so YouTube will promote this video to more people. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at mylifeoutdoors.com and as always, thanks for watching.